Hey everyone, Tom here from Tom's AWI Review. So uh, this video, I'm going to uh, attempt to do another painting tutorial, this time on the uh, Pennsylvania Line uh, Continental. Um, I'm going to paint this guy up to be either in the 6th or 9th Pennsylvania Regiment. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, really depends on whether I want to do the lapels. Um, but uh, I've base coated... Uh, this individual, sorry, prime this individual with uh, leather brown from uh, the Army Painter uh, primer line. And uh, it's giving me a nice brown to work with. I'm going to uh, go ahead and get started on this guy. I don't know how this is going to go. This is only my second tutorial, so hopefully I don't screw this up too badly. So um, first step I'm going to do is get that red paint on this guy. So I will do that and you can watch. Okay. So, you can see I've got the red painted on. I've decided to do a 6th Pennsylvania Regiment uh, officer with this uh, individual. Um, you could tell that because I went with the full red lapels, cuffs, and cape. Uh, the 9th Pennsylvania, there's a deserted report which indicates just the cuffs and cape were red. Although they do have, this could, got, this could be supplemented as a 9th Pennsylvania Regiment as well. Because uh, there were a couple... These are reports that indicated that the uh, they had full red lapels as well. Uh, and the West Kit was also red. They were issued red West Kits. So this is just the first step. Uh, next, I am going to work on the breeches. So you might be wondering why I'm not uh, highlighting this right now. <clears throat> and um, basically, I want to get all the base colors on first. And then from there, I'll work on the highlights uh, afterwards. So... Moving right along. Oh, just a quick uh, add here. Uh, for the red, I used Vallejo Flat Red. And uh, there's your model color number. Uh, for the Buckskin Breeches, as always, I will be using Desert Yellow from Vallejo Model Color. Okay. All right, so um, buckskin breeches are done. And uh, the brown is actually providing a really nice um, area to cover. Uh, it really brings out that yellowy tone to the leather breeches. Uh, so yeah, it's coming together. Um, not bad. So I think... Um, the next step is going to be the straps, and I'm going to paint them with a mixture of mixture of paints that have vanished off of my table a little bit. Uh, where are they at? Where are they at? Well. I'm going to be using a mixture of wolf gray and a mixture of, uh, where, there it is, off-white. Uh, I occasionally will put in just a dab of pale sand just to kind of bring it uh, to a leathery sort of color as opposed to a cool white color. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, be back in a minute.
Okay. So this is the color that I ended up with. Um, you can see it's a, you can see the consistency too. I, I watered it down just a little bit uh, and uh, that's how it looks on the miniature. Now I, I did slop a little bit, but that's all right. Uh, I tried to clean up some spots. Uh, I wasn't fast enough to clean up this spot right here over the shoulder. Um, you can usually go back over that with, uh, with the same color. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I have leather brown in the 17 mil bottles like this. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to rely on washes to clean that up later. Uh, it's not a huge problem. It really isn't. Um, you know, I might even be able to highlight over that depending on how I highlight this later. Um, so for the next step, I am going to work on the black bits like the uh cocked hat up here the cocked hat the uh uh the, let's see the bayonet um frog here and the scabbard the cartridge box and i think that's all of the bits of black on this guy because the boots are half boots so they're gonna be leather I'm sorry, they're not half boots, they're, they're boots, but they're going to be like a leathery color, like a dark um, a dark brown with the top parts, a bit of a like a redder leather brown. So, all right, a lot of brown on this guy. All right, let's get cracking here. All right, so black bits are done. Just uh, cleaning off my brush. Uh, if you're curious, I use a uh, number two brush from Brush from Vallejo. I'll show you here in a second. I'm not uh, I'm not an expert at cleaning my brushes by any you know stretch of the imagination, but. Um, it's about the size that I'm working with right now. So, um, some guys, they use really small brushes. Um, I find that using the slightly longer brushes gets more paint uh, onto the figure. And actually, I just noticed I didn't even notice this before, but. Usually this would be the same color as the scabbard, um, but I decided to go a little differently this time around and uh, make the frog white uh, as opposed to black. Um, okay, so black bits are done. Let's see here. I guess I can start working on the... Uh, the white on the shirt um, the uh, you can see like there's you can't see because it's not focusing uh, there's like little ruffles on the shirt coming through here and um, all right let's do that next I'm gonna do that off camera um, but I'm probably just going to use let me show you here straight white with uh, yeah, some cold gray. Game color cold gray here to kind of just tone it down slightly. Um, actually, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do cold gray and I'm going to do pale sand to give it a different. I want to give it a different color than the uh, than the the straps on this guy. So. Here we go. Okay. So you can kind of maybe see that it's more of a uh, sandy color 
as opposed to a, a cold white or a very light gray that the straps are. Um, and the reason why I did that is because I really wanted to distinguish the shirt from the uh, the the straps and kind of give it a uh, um, you know some character. Uh, you know, you can just paint everything white, you know, and be done with it. But, you know, that wouldn't give it any character. It would look kind of plain and blend together. And when I apply the uh, the dips later on, uh, it'll really kind of make that distinction pop. Um, so there's that. Uh, I'm not sure what color I'm going to paint the sash yet. I don't know if I'll make this guy a sergeant or an ensign or a corporal. Um, so I, I left his epaulette kind of blank at the moment but um you know i will come back and paint that at some point uh i will start working on the flesh tones next um i will actually be doing this in layers um just very subtle layers though uh i'm gonna start with hopefully i can find it because i haven't really used it in a while I'm going to apply I usually use my Panzer Aces Flesh Triad, but uh, since I've been painting, my one flesh tone has vanished. And uh, so instead of that original base color, I'm going to use black red. And then over the black red, I'm going to apply Panzer Aces Flesh Base. And then the highlight will be done with highlight flesh also from panzer aces and i'm going to mix a little bit of this in with this just enough to lighten it though and then i might do one final highlight with just the highlight flesh alone um but we'll see uh it depends again i'm applying a lot of washes to this so i don't want to overdo the highlighting um but uh you know, for the sake of this video, I'll uh, I'll give it a shot. And um, I haven't highlighted flesh in a while, primarily because I've been so busy. So hopefully, I don't screw it up, and I got to really clean my brush too, because I have all that red on it from doing some touch-up work. That looks still kind of red. I mean, it's not going to matter because I'm using. That's pretty good. I'm using black red anyway, but still. All right, so uh, here we go. Okay, so first layer's done. Uh, on to the, uh, let this dry for a second here. Uh, it was pretty watered down, so it shouldn't need too much. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just almost dry now. So I'll give it a few more seconds to dry and then I'll hit it with the next layer. Okay, so um, you'll notice very stark highlights here. Um, <laughs> the next, the base level is done. Uh, it's not perfect. Like I said, I haven't done this in a long time and I'm painting at a very awkward angle. Uh, the highlights I'm going to apply next and they're going to be um, a smaller area focusing on the knuckles and the tops of the hands and the fingers and the nose and the areas that are going to hit it. So. Um, I might do two layers of that in the time lapse you're going to see next, and uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so the, the highlight is pretty stark, and I'm going to go over it one more time here on camera live. And uh, I'm just going to go over that with um, just straight out highlight flesh. And I'm just going to hit the tips. And um, it's going to be a stark contrast because we are going to go over these. My brush is pretty much spent here. I'm having a real hard time getting the level of detail that I normally do because I am struggling with my brush. 
Uh, and this is a really awkward angle for me right now, so I apologize. Um, you know, if you're if you're getting me a little low on camera here, um, that's because it's very difficult for me to uh, to get on camera right now um, at this bizarre angle that I'm at here. So. And again, I'm just trying to get the uh, the tips here of the fingers. Ooh, I don't have a whole lot of paint on the brush here. Yeah. You know. Top of the thumb. Okay. And uh, I'm going to call that done. And again, it's it, you can tell it's there. It's a very stark highlight. But remember, we're going to put washes on this. And it's going to um, really kind of tone that down a little bit. And uh, you know what? I'm going to... Even though the light's hitting, I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting in here too. Because you're going to see the hand. All right, so that flesh tones. Oh goodness, did I? Crap! Looks like I brushed my brush across that, didn't I? And I think it's too late for me to wash it out with any sort of water. I think what happens is I put it down around right top of an old uh, yeah. Crap! I'm gonna have to touch that up somehow. Uh. Sometimes if you get it fast enough, you can you can uh, get it out with water. But I am a little too late, and I don't want to mess up the brushwork that I just did on the hands. So, all right, I'll be back in a minute after I touch that up. Okay, so uh, I touched it up a little bit. Um, it's not perfect color match, but I'm going to highlight it anyway, so hopefully it'll, it'll hide the... Uh, mistake. Uh, I also um, gave the flesh a 50-50 mix of the Vallejo Sepia Shade uh, Wash and the uh, Vallejo... I've lost, I've lost another... Here it is. Gosh, I'm terrible at that. Uh, <laughs> flesh Wash. Um, so it's 50-50 mix of these two washes and, um, you know, bring just to bring the color down a bit because I thought it was a little too bright and I think it worked out pretty well. It kind of bronzed the flesh a little bit, which again, once I do the final uh, touches on this with the uh, quick dip, that'll, you know, all those little imperfections, whatever, will go away uh, or at least they'll be better hidden and, um... You know, looks pretty pretty good for now. Um, so for the next step, uh, I'm very hesitant to put this model down on the. Oh my god, my cats are still have like an hour yet before they get fed, and they're already meowing. And my wife is out at the moment, so uh, they're going a little crazy. I apologize for that. Um, if you're hearing that in the video, I swear I don't torture cats. They're just hungry, and this is them telling me they're hungry. So. Um, so yeah, I'm hesitant to put it down on the, on the thing because I don't want to get the paint on it again. Um, for the next step, I think, uh, this is going to be, most of their uniform is brown, so I don't have to do anything really to the coat until I get to the highlighting stage, and, um, I, I think what I might do is, I don't want to do the metal bits yet, I'll do the musket next. And for the musket, I use, uh, mahogany brown which is, nope, that's red leather. That's leather, here we go. Ta-da, mahogany brown. So, um, I'll just uh, 
pop some of that on my palette here. Don't need a whole lot because I'm only doing one guy. If I were doing more, I'd use a little bit more paint. I've actually wasted quite a bit of paint uh, on my palette already. Um, but it's actually been good because uh, the extra paint on my palette has helped to help me make fix mistakes that I've made. Um, and again, this is an awkward angle, so I'll do this on... Uh, and the brown... I'm actually really impressed with how well the brown is acting as a primer. Um, you know, a lot of you out there be like, well, I use black or I use white primer or whatever. But uh, I'm actually finding the more infantry regiments that I paint, it's helping me a lot and actually saving me many steps by priming it the color of their main part of their uniform. And usually that's the regimental. And by doing that, I'm actually taking a lot of the uh, the um, the delicate paintwork away. And, you know, I know that kind of defeats the purpose. I mean, these are, this is after all a hobby. Um, but, you know, like I said, time for me is limited. And I'd rather be, um, you know, working on other paint projects and and you know not just wasting time on you know 24 identical or nearly identical guys especially when I get into the British regiments there's less variation and um you know because you know they're all wearing red so they're well I mean with the exception of the loyalists uh that I have to paint which um thankfully there's some more variation there with the greens um but you know I'd rather be working on uh, a plethora of very unique models as opposed to um you know the same model over and over again and and so as a result i found that doing it this way does actually help me uh not get burnt out as quickly and uh, i can paint more uh without having to worry about that so all right the mahogany brown is done and uh, for the record, I don't generally highlight the muskets. Uh, I know some people like adding wood grain to the muskets. I am so envious of those who can do that because I I cannot. I mean, I probably could, but uh, I, it would look terrible. You know, I would try it and maybe it might turn out okay, but I, I'm thinking it'll just look terrible. And, uh, you know, honestly, at this scale, it's going to look good with, uh, with just that and... Um, so for the next step, I will do the uh, uh, silver bits, and then I'll go and do the gold bits, and um, yeah, then we'll be just about done, uh, with the exception of the boots um, and the hair, and I'm still deciding what color I want to do the hair, and uh, I might have to stop at some point in the middle here and feed the cats, um, because they're going to get incessantly louder as this goes on so i'll be back okay. so for uh the metal bits i'm going to be using uh army painter war paints plate metal metal um i actually like this uh, metallic color better than some of the vallejo colors i haven't used any of the air i know there are some people out there that swear by vallejo air metallics um i just haven't haven't used them uh, I'm sure that they are fantastic, and um, I will have to pick up a bottle uh, when I get the chance. Uh, as you can see here, all I'm doing uh, for the buttons is kind of just getting a doppel of paint on my brush. And highlight, there we go. And, uh, crap, I think I just put it in. Uh, nope, I didn't. I'm good. Um just dab it onto my miniature wherever there's a button uh, and sometimes the buttons are hard to see and uh, other times they're not so when they're hard to see I kind of just um, make pretend where they are like well I can't quite see where that button is so I'm gonna just create a button um, where I think it should be And, yeah, whoops. Of course, I'm on camera, so that means I am going to make some mistakes. 
That's just uh, how it works. I'd make mistakes off camera too, but at least then I can pretend like I didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Hmm. It's a button there. Button there. And again, when um, when the quick shade comes on, it's gonna cover up a lot of these mistakes here so they're not going to be as obvious and it'll it won't look so obnoxious and I'm going to go over some of the spots that I blobbed a little bit too much on uh later with um with red paint because since most of the silver is on bits that um oh, look I'm even off camera sorry about that um most of that was on the facings, so. And, um, you know, like I've said before, it depends on how accurate you want to be. Um, with my 4th New York Regiment, they had gold buttons. Um, the 6th Pennsylvania and the 1st Pennsylvania Regiment, uh, they had silver buttons. Or white buttons. They were sometimes referred to as. All right. And. So this color is not covering as well over the brown primer. But it's doing all right. Oops. Ah, gotta stop doing that. Again, awkward angle. Let's just blame the angle. And my cat's meowing. You can blame that too. Okay. And I just got to do the ramrod. The great thing about these Perry sculpts, man, is that they are just so detailed. And uh, it's real easy to pick out such a... Uh, a bit. Such fine details with the paintbrush. This brush is really spent. It does not want to cooperate at all. All right, so there he is for now. I've got to do some touch-up work on him. I'll do that quick off camera because this video is getting long and I've still got some more work to do on this guy yet. So I'll be back. Okay, so uh, did some touch-up work on them. Um, much crisper now, I think. Um, still not perfect, but again, some of those details are going to be fixed with the quick shade. Uh, gold comes on next, and again, uh, actually, not again. Um, this time I am going to use some Vallejo Game Color Glorious Gold, which... I think uh, makes a nice brassy color. Um, it's not quite gold, but it's uh, it's just enough that it will look nice. And uh, the parts I'm going to focus on are actually the butt of the musket. And I think I'm going to do a little bit around the edge here. Yeah. Just enough to kind of bring out the fact that there's a butt plate there. Okay. And the trigger guard. And 
and uh, yeah, so that's the musket. And uh, also, I use I use khaki for the for the strap of the musket. Um, again, just another type of brown to give it character. Sometimes they go a little lighter. Sometimes I use beige, but uh, or buff. But I thought khaki would be better uh, for this particular guy. And yep. Yeah. So uh, all that's left to do now is the sash. Um, and then after I get the sash done, I'll do the boots. And I'm going to do that off camera. And then uh, I'll think about highlighting this guy. And I'll be back in a flash. Okay. Um, so off camera, I highlighted the sash and the epaulette with various shades of green. Uh, oh no. God, I am a mess tonight. I'm just having the worst time with, uh, with paper towels. Maybe I need to like change paper towels out so I don't, uh, keep fumbling through this video like an idiot. <sighs> Which I am, that's right. Um, so, uh, again, um not so subtle highlights on this um because uh, i wanted to go for a deep contrast again because i'm going to be uh applying a couple washes actually i applied a bit of a wash on this already uh, i applied the vallejo game color uh, green wash and um, what i initially started with was i applied black green um and then uh, I didn't add anything to that, but then I applied flat green. Uh, and then that was my next layer. And then I added just a hint of lime green to, uh, to that mixture. And then I uh, added a little bit more lime green to, for a final highlight. And, uh, and that's, where we're at with this now. So he is a corporal uh, as of this point. And I think I like the contrast between the green and the reds and the browns. So I'm sticking with that. Um, so yeah, I'm actually running low on battery. So I'm going to unfortunately have to uh, stop the video and finish this off camera, which I know I'm going to get a lot of hates for because people have been wanting me to highlight on camera. Um, but uh, I want to get this finished tonight. So I'll, what I'll do is maybe I'll save a little bit of highlighting to do on like one section of the coat just to show you how I do it. Um, and then from there we'll move on. So here we go. Okay. We're back. Uh, so I've done uh, all the highlighting off camera. My, uh, my phone is now fully charged. And um, it's, uh, yeah, so sorry about that, guys. Uh, I went ahead and painted in the eyes, and um, the, the, the highlighting is very subtle. Uh, let me see if I can get a closer view for you guys. Um, you can just barely see at the edges, and that's because when I apply the quick shade, uh, the highlighting is going to be very dark. Uh, I should say the shadows are going to be very dark, so it's going to really pull out those highlights, even if they're subtle like this. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I also did some highlighting on the hat, sorry, the cocked hat there, and on the um, cartridge box and the bayonet scabbard. And this guy is pretty much ready to go. Uh, I just got to, I mean, I could just leave it like this and paint it, you know, do the basing and, and, then, and then be good to go, but um, I'm going to apply some quick shade to this. So I'm going to actually do that on camera since I've never actually done it on camera before and many people have asked me uh, how I apply it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that quick uh, and I'm going to get ready to go and I'll be right back. Yeah, whoops, I lost that footage and now I feel dumb. So yeah, get yourself a snack, go to the bathroom, come on back, let's finish this video. Sorry about that everybody, I, I really feel dumb. Okay, so it's been two days since my uh, my previous segment of this video. It'll seem like a second to you, probably less. 
Um, here's a miniature after I sprayed it with some doll coat and uh, went over it with some uh, Vallejo matte varnish. Um, this is just for the parts that my uh, my spray didn't didn't quite hit. So you know, I, the legs and the boots and uh, some parts underneath the uh, um, the back of the coat here. I didn't quite hit that well with the doll coat spray. So, um, but yeah, uh, I think it came out pretty well. Um, again, I painted this from an awkward angle, so it's not my best work, but uh, hopefully it doesn't look too terrible and hopefully it's good enough that you'll be like, oh, well, I can do that. If this guy, if this loser on this channel can make this, I can do it too. Um, so anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You can kind of see here the, uh, the subtle highlighting that I did around the edging um, and also on the shoulder here and the arm uh, bits on the top of the folds and uh, also on this arm as well. Uh, and also on the hat, you can see the, uh, the highlighting there, hopefully. And, you know, the, again, the whole purpose of, of doing the subtle highlights is that when I put the dark tone army painter dark tone on here that it uh it really kind of brought out those colors just slightly enough that it didn't overpower it because i, I like you can see here um if i had left it regular you know the regular color the base color it would have been fine it would have worked but now that there's highlights it kind of gives it some personality gives it some character same thing with the folds and the uh the sash here and the epaulet uh it just gives it a little character and also um, the hand and the face and everything. Uh, I'm very actually happy. I'm happy with the eyes. Uh, eyes came out pretty well. They don't always work out for me. Um, for example, on this miniature, um, I'm happy with the miniature as it turned out, but I'm I'm not 100% um, happy with how the eyes look. <laughs> but uh, I didn't use any dark tone on that miniature. Um, Maybe that was my problem. I didn't. I didn't use the quick shade. But anyway, uh, here it is, and hopefully you uh, you got something out of this video, and you'll uh, use it for your own uh, edification. Um, one final thing before I go. You can see here. This is the color that I used. It's dry now, so I can't quite demonstrate. But the color that I used for the highlighting. Um, what I did was I used a mixture of. Flat Earth and uh, New Wood, both from Vallejo. This is the Panzer Ace series, obviously. Uh, and the whole point of this was was really to kind of just give it some subtle highlights. I didn't want to go overboard with it. I just wanted to give it enough to bring out the, uh, you know, bring it up a notch. So anyway, take care, guys. Have a good one.